Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper. Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. Uh, Nike Hot Seat, very special guest today, makes his return to the show, Corey Cooper. And Corey, good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Scott? Good. I'm, I'm interested to talk to you about what's happening. But before we get to that, I know you have something to say to your current employer. What is that? I just want to thank them. Uh, the Galli family, they do. They did a lot for myself, my family. and um, They do a lot for a lot of people. Um, St. Paul's High School here in Maryland has taken a huge jump. The Galleys help you know kids that wouldn't maybe be able to afford it going to a, such a prestigious school. It's a great school academically, and uh, the wrestling program's really taking off. Head coach Rob Eider, we had John Morrison, myself, um, Les Sigmund involved, and a lot of good student athletes, wrestlers that <clears throat> you know Kurt McHenry, world champ, um, a lot of different guys that get the opportunity to train there. Um, that's at the high school level. Uh, at the senior level, we have uh, different wrestlers that you see sponsored by Team Milwaukee. Um, the company that my boss, my boss Joe Galli, uh, he's the CEO of TTI, which is Tektronic Industries. And you know, that's Milwaukee, Ryobi, Rigid, or Double Home, you know, just a million different uh, brands. And, you know, guys like Kyle Dake, um, Chris Perry, uh, David Taylor, the list goes on. Um, we give them, or my boss, you know, uh, through the company, gives them a situation where they can stay where they believe they need to be in order to be successful. You know, so whether it's at Penn State, Cornell, Oklahoma State, where those guys want to be, um, they get to stay. You know, Tony Ramos just, um, you know, won the Open. David Taylor won the Open. Uh, Kyle Dake should have won the Open. <laughs> um, you know, but it gives them an opportunity. Chris Perry had a good tournament. Josh Kindig had a good tournament. It just gives those guys opportunity to train where they feel they need to be in order to be successful. So the Galli family um, just does a tremendous amount um, to help, you know, whether it's the senior level guys, you know, college level, um, with coaches and athletes and, um, you know, high school. And, 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 yeah, and they've done just a, a tremendous amount for my family. Um, my boss is, uh, Joe is always uh, in and out of the country. He's doing, making moves and doing different things. So I've had a, I've learned a lot from him. I mean, what kind of, how can you get a better mentor than a guy like that? And his wife has done a tremendous amount for my family and I just, you know, teaching us, like she always said, it takes a village to raise a, to raise a child. And uh, I just learned a lot about her for, um, you know, just being a father and, you know, trying to be a, the best role model, being the best person I can be. So Cindy Galli um, has just done a tremendous amount. Joe uh, Peter just graduated. He's graduated from Stanford, just um, won a lot of accolades at Stanford, which is a, you know, a tremendous school academically and athletically. And uh, I'm going to miss my little Xander. Uh, that was uh, their youngest son who I've been training. He's just an unbelievable person, so mature. He's going to do some great things on and off the mat. I'm excited to see his future, and I hope I can stay involved in their lives as much as possible. Corey Cooperman, our guest, he uh, joins us today to talk about his new job that he will be taking uh, over at the as the freestyle coach, the freestyle head coach at the Finger Lakes Wrestling Club, and uh, as that program continues to grow. You might remember Corey as one of the most sought-after recruits in the country. When back uh, initially, he had committed to the University of Minnesota, rethought that, decided he wanted to go to Lehigh and uh, become a truly great wrestler. You might remember the 2006 NCAA semifinals, a, a storybook match against Tian Ware. Uh, but, Corey, now we go to, uh, we head back up to Cornell. Uh, you've been there before, and now it's, it's time for you and your, your little family to go back up there and make an impact on the senior-level guys and then even on some of the uh, young kids that come in during the summers uh, and for camps and clinics. Talk to us about how this all came about. Um, well, coming out of uh, college, I was, I knew what, you know, when I was younger, I knew I was going to be a coach. Um, it's just something I love to do. I always felt that I'd be a better coach than I was uh, as a wrestler. And I, I still think that is true. I think I've um, accomplished more as a coach than, than I did on the mat. Um, you know, but like I just said, Joe Galli, tremendous mentor, um, leader for, for me, just a, a great person to have in my life. Uh, when I got out of college, and I was taking the job, Rob Cole, um, he was doing big things. You know, I had a great college coach, with Greg Strobel, Chris Ayers, Jason Kutz, Kerry McCoy, um, and Pat Santoro for a little bit. Um, but when I was, you know, when, we were at, when I was at Lehigh, we won five EIWA titles in a row. 
right? And that was the first time that, you know, a, a school had won, you know, five conference titles in a row. But when I was there, we can see Cornell was, was nipping at our heels. I think my senior year, we may have tied them in a dual meet. Um, and they had this unbelievable, the, the Freeman Wrestling Facility was just uh, an unbelievable thing. It was the first of its kind, first, you know, freestanding wrestling facility. And that just showed the dedication that Cornell, Andy Noel, athletic director, uh, Steve Herber, um, another athletic, assistant athletic director, the commitment they had to wrestling. And that's something that I want to be a part of. You know, it was uh, cutting edge. And, you know, Rob is always pushing the envelope in terms of, you know, being an innovator, being a leader in, in our sport. And, you know, I just thought it was, you know, I, I learned a lot from my coaches at Lehigh. I thought it was another great opportunity. I mean, I've, I've been blessed in terms of the mentors and coaches that I've had in my life from when I started out, um, wrestling clubs, the peak and the edge. Um, Wally Muhammad was my first coach at the peak. And then at the edge, Ernie Monaco, he had the real like, first wrestling club. You know, and, and then people debate on who had a first club, but this was the first club where at least John Smith was coming to, and all these different college coaches were coming to recruit. And then high school, I had Jeff Buxton, arguably the best high school coach in history. Uh, like I said, my college coaches in college at Lehigh were great. Um, and I had another opportunity to learn um, from another great coach who I respected, but I wanted to be able to pick his brain. You know, and I thought when I got to coaching, you know, hey, I'm going to show up in my sweatpants, get a workout in the morning. You know, watch some wrestling on the internet, some flow. Uh, that was just coming about. And, you know, just be ready for another practice in the afternoon. Uh, I quickly learned that was not the case. It was khakis and polo, 7.30 in the morning, getting in that office and just working our tail off all day and night. Um, I learned a lot from him, from Rob Cole, in my three years coaching at Cornell. So when the opportunity came to join him, um, not per se, not working for Cornell University, but working at Cornell University in the Freeman Wrestling Center again. Um, an opportunity to, you know, coach and uh, train senior level athletes. I've never had that opportunity. Um, I, I've only coached college and then I was working with high school and elementary school kids. So an opportunity to coach senior level kids, uh, an opportunity to be back in Ithaca, to be working with Rob Cole again. I thought it was just an unbelievable opportunity and something I couldn't pass on. We're talking with Corey Cooperman and the opportunity to advance his career. Um, good. It's, it's, I think it's a tremendous opportunity. First of all, you get to uh, pick Rob Cole's brain again. Uh, but talk to us about your coaching uh, um, tour. In other words, all the different programs that you've been at uh, once you graduated from Lehigh. Take us through the, uh, the tour. Okay, so uh, right after Lehigh, I went to Cornell for three years. And... Like I said, we won five EIWA titles when I was at Lehigh, and that's including my redshirt year. As soon as I left, um, well, Lehigh had all the coaches went different places. You know, uh, Pat Santoro, Maryland, Jason Kutz, East Stroudsburg, Chris Ayers, Princeton, um, and I know I'm leaving one. Oh, Kerry McCoy, Stanford. Uh, so there was coaches this person, you know. I went to Cornell, and in that first year, we won the EIWAs. Uh, we won EIWAs all three years. And all three years, we have four All-Americans. And I, don't th I think Cornell has still won the EIWA since that point. Um, so they're on a, a streak of probably about 11 or so, maybe more. Um, after that, I went to Rutgers. And I had an opportunity to go back to my home state. And you know, it was really a diamond in the rough. You know, um, not a lot of people gave Rutgers the respect. But uh, Coach Goodell, John Leonardis, they had a vision. And, you know, it was really a great opportunity. We went, we climbed the ladder to probably around seventh in the country in terms of duels. We beat teams like Missouri. Um, we had a couple really good wins. You know, Virginia Tech, they had just beaten Oklahoma State. I mean, it was, we, we really showed that Rutgers can be, you know, a perennial program, a top program. And now they're really doing a great job. I was only there for two years, um, but the program, like I said, they went from about 25th or less to around 7th, 5th in the, in the duels and, you know, getting guys, but yeah, maybe two guys in the round of 12. Now they're having two All-Americans a year. So that program's doing a great job. And like I said, the coach is there. Now they have Donnie Prisloff, Joe Pollard has been there. They have a great staff and good things are happening with them. Uh, then the opportunity arose. Um, my great friend Mark Perry was at Cal Poly. I was at Rutgers. And, you know, we always wanted to coach together. 
um, he was talking about me coming out to Cal Poly, sending me these great pictures of St. Louis Obispo, and uh, showing me his backyard. I was showing him my backyard. It was two different things. Um, <laughs> but then, uh, you know, he wasn't seeing the commitment that he wanted to see, and then an opportunity arose for him to go to University of Illinois. And we talked about, you know, me coming out there um, after his first year, and I was, I was definitely interested. And then they called in September and said, you know, we want you to come out. And I said, yeah, you know, after the season, we can definitely talk about it. Uh, no, um, we're talking now. You know, Mark's, Mark's father, Mark Perry Sr., was a great college coach. He was assistant at Oklahoma State, and he knows what it takes to win. And, uh, you know, I think he told Mark, you can't wait on getting your staff together. And you, know, you want to get these recruits, the Zane Richards, the Nico Reyes, the Zach Brunsons. You want to get those guys. You need to get your staff compiled now. And I kind of got pushed in the corner. I had to make my decision quick. And I chose to go to Illinois. Coaching the Big Ten, uh, you know, we all know that the Big Ten is, a, is the wrestling conference. And it's a great, you know, it's a great wrestling conference. A uh, huge commitment there. And a lot of NCAA champs and All-Americans come out of there. So um, <clears throat> in September, I... Um, I, I made the move, and you know there was other deciding factors. Uh, I was kind of hot for Mark's cousin, who's now my wife of five <laughs> years, and we have two kids. Um, so it was a win-win for me. Uh, that program, like I said, they were around 20th in the country, and in our first year, we made the Final Four, and we actually beat Cornell. Um, but um, our only losses were to Minnesota, Iowa, and Oklahoma State. We we. Had, uh, we had a really good season. Uh, Jesse Delgado coming out, freshman, beating Mac, Matt McDonough in Carver Hawkeye. Um, that just set the tone for his career. What a stud on and off the mat. He's a great kid. Um, you know, guys like Jordan Blanton and um, Steven Rodriguez actually came from Rutgers to Illinois with me. And then uh, Conrad Poles, who uh, really took under my wing. Um, we're, we're like family. His family's my family. We still keep in touch. Um, you know, he wasn't, he never qualified for the NCAA tournament for his first two years. And then in his last two years, he became you know, a two time All American. Um, I remember he lost first match at the NCAAs, and, you know, he called me to come up to his hotel room. I want to thank you. I said, hey, stop right there. You know, I don't want to hear it. You thank me Friday night when all said and done. And, um, March 17th, I believe it was, 2012, um, he uh, became an All-American, and that night, um, my wife, my girlfriend, fiance at the time, uh, told me she was pregnant. Oh, boy. And, yeah. So <laughs> it, was a, it was a day that I'll never forget. March 17th, 2012, one of the best days in my life as a coach and just as a person. And, you know, I, I had taken, I was climbing the coaching ladder. You know, I remember um, Coach Borelli, you know, a couple different people. My friend used to call it the Coop Effect. I, I just always thought I was in the right place at the right time. Um, you know, a guy like Coach Borelli, who I really respected, you know, saying, hey, you know, I saw what you did at Cornell. I saw what you did at Rutgers. I saw what you did at Illinois. And I was like, hmm, you got a point there, <laughs> you know. But um, I had made a move from assistant down to volunteer just to chase a dream, you know, go after a team national title. Um, but with a kid coming along the way, I had to um, you know, I had to put priorities first. And an unbelievable opportunity came where my boss, Joe Galli, and my former boss, Rob Cole, had communicated. And um, my boss needed a coach. Joe Galli needed a coach for his boys. And he contacted Rob Cole. And Rob Cole says, listen, I don't think, I don't know if he knows anything about power tools, but when it comes to training kids, you know, you're not going to get anything better. I think... Uh, Rob was pleased with the job I did at Cornell, and while I was coaching at Cornell, I was training a high school kid, um, and you know, with through our club, we were able to, you know, sort of my radius kid lived in the next town over, so he was able to train with our club, and we worked out for a couple years, and he went on to be a four-time NCAA champ, Kyle Dake, um, you know, kid is unbelievably talented, and now I'll have the opportunity of working with him again. So, yeah, not just him. You'll be able to uh, well, we got, to we work with Gabe Dean. Guys, right? Gabe Dean, uh, Brian Real Buto, Dylan Palacio. Um, we have a crop with uh, the Greco coach up there, Ahad. He's got probably about 11 guys up there, uh, studs that are training. And, you know, we're looking to you know build the freestyle circuit, at least um, get some more athletes in there and have one of the strongest RTC programs 
uh, around. You know, we have definitely some competition, but uh, now we have a coach for Greco and freestyle, and we're definitely looking to make a huge impact and get a lot of guys on the World and Olympic team and bring home some medals for the U.S. When do you uh, make the actual move? Um, at the late late July, uh, I'll be moving up there, but uh, we have a senior level training camp um, the 22nd through the 26th. So we're looking to get some guys up there. I've already been in touch with some of the top guys from around the country, seeing if we can get those guys up. And then we have we have a couple camps going on. We have another camp um, for high school guys, um, and it's June 10th and 11th. So the Saturday and Sunday, June 10th and 11th, and it's a you know training camp, get guys ready for Fargo. So I'll be making the move up and you know back and forth, back and forth, which. Um, you know what? You know, we have uh, some great kids up there. Besides those guys that I named with Kyle Dake, Gabe Dean, Brian Robito, Dylan Palacio, I don't know if I'm allowed to comment or not. I'm not a coach at Cornell, so um, I think at least everyone knows the studs that we have coming in, um, or the younger guys, I should say, you know, that, that are Cornell guys like Vito and Yanni and uh, Darmstad. You know, we have um, a good crop of kids uh, that are ready. You know, Yanni, we had Yanni on the radio show Saturday. You know, he's a two-time world champ, right? Oh, you, you just you had him on Saturday. That's awesome. Yeah, great kid, great kid. What a stud. I met him at the Olympic Training Center. Oh. And you can tell the kid just loves the sport. He's a student of the sport. Yeah. I've had a couple conversations with his father. Um, guy definitely knows what he's talking about when it comes to wrestling. And then, you know, Vito's dad, um, I mean, Vugar, I, I I studied the 1995 World Championships growing up. It was the only VHS that I had, you know, the, the old thick VHSs back in the day. <laughs> so I used to watch him. What a stud. And... Um, yeah, so we have some some really good wrestlers uh, coming through, and I'm, it's, I'm it's pumped up to work with them. Up against the clock, but it's always good to talk to you. Congratulations, the next step. Best to uh, your beautiful wife, Leanne, and, and of course, uh, all the kids that you have an opportunity to help uh, get them through their career, make them better. And by the way, fans, you can find out more uh, as, as much as you want. Go to cooptrain.com. Follow them on Facebook as well been a great friend of the show over the years and to me as well. Corey Cooper has been our guest in the Nike hot seat today. Corey, <laughs> what was that? I say, I don't know about the cooptrain.com. I don't know if that, that website's up and running yet. But, yeah, social media is at Coop Train and uh, Facebook, Corey Cooperman, you know. Easy enough. Yeah, no, I'm sitting on your page right now, dude, Coop Train. All right, yeah. awesome. Up and running. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, thank you for the time. Congratulations, man. Thanks for everything you do, Scott. We really appreciate it. Always. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown Media. Our special guest of the Nike Hot Seat today, Corey Cooperman.